In this video, I'll show you how you can replace the default captions with custom created ones of your own. So I was taking a look at the Adobe eLearning community this morning and I saw this message here about custom feedback. I won't read the whole thing for you, but suffice it to say, Bobby is looking to create a group of smart shapes that will slide in from the bottom of his screen and will cover the whole screen. So ideally the group will already be there, but the movement will be triggered by the fact that the user has given a correct response. The same is done for an incorrect response, but this time we'll have another group of smart shapes. So I've decided to take one of my earlier projects, and you can see it here on your screen, and I've added this grouped object here. And this grouped object, I simply called it correct caption group. I didn't bother to create one for the incorrect captions, but it could just as easily be done. Um, I retained uh, an earlier caption that I had, and I can show you how that's done here. Now, this particular group, I've got it set up to be not visible in output. Uh, it consists of three different objects. There's this semi-transparent background, which fills the whole screen. There's this green box here, or green uh, square or rectangle, with the message correct, click the next button to proceed. And the third object is a smart shape being used as a button, and it's simply a next button with exactly what you would expect to find under the Actions tab. Simply go to next slide. I do like to check off the hand cursor. It gives you a visual cue that this is a clickable object. And I also like to disable the click sound because I'm not a fan of that. And in fact, if you want to take a look at one of my more recent videos, and I'll put a link for it right here, uh, there's a process for how you can replace that built-in click sound uh, with something that is uh, more desirable to you. So to make it easy to work on this slide, I've created this smart shape here. And of course, it's already set to be hidden. But you can actually, from your timeline, you can actually... Um, change its, uh, its visibility to you in edit mode uh, just by checking off the little dot underneath the eyeball here and we'll just make that hidden from view so we can work on a few things. So with all custom created uh, knowledge checks or question slides you're probably going to want to have some kind of slide reset capability uh, in the event that a user returns to this slide from a previous page or um, goes back from a from a page that's later on in the course and uh, This becomes a little bit more complicated when you start getting into all sorts of things happening on the screen now this will vary a lot with uh, with different uh, uh, Situations that you've created or scenarios that you've created But basically all I wanted to do was go through this reset slide on entry advanced action to return everything to how it was when I created it. So the very first thing I do is I change the state of the feedback square. And you can't see it here, but there's a, uh, a transparent box here that, that contains a series of, of multi-state objects that uh, contain all the feedback that I originally created. Of course, this, this new style slide-in pop-up is, is an addition to this. Uh, so this will change the state back to normal, which is what we want to do. Uh, these four commands here will change the state of all four of these buttons back to normal because I do have a selected state, which I use when a user clicks one of these. I want to enable answer one, two, three, and four because in the process of submitting an answer, it will, uh, a correct answer, it will disable these buttons so that a user can't click them again. Uh, that may not be required now that we have a correct caption that covers the whole thing, but sometimes I find it's good to cover all your bases because you never know what scenario someone might take to end up on this slide. I've added the uh, hide correct caption group uh, so that every time a user comes into this slide, Again, it, it hides that uh, that group of correct answers. So I want to, or the 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 group of uh, smart shapes and buttons, uh, so that they're not visible again. And we also want to assign the variables that I will be using to keep track of which answer has been selected 
back to a zero value. So, and again, this could vary depending on how you build your question slides, but uh, essentially I just wanna reset everything back to the way it was when I first started designing this particular interaction. So from there I have uh, four possible buttons that can be pressed here, 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 and here. And let me show you what happens when you click, for example, this first button here. Under the Actions tab, it's executing the advanced action called Action 1, which is simply the lines of code that we want to run every time someone chooses the first answer. It's really uh, fairly straightforward. Let me slide this over here so we can still see the button. So this is called action one. It's going to change the state of answer one to selected. Now selected uh, is changing the color of the button and changes the text of the button. So it's very clear that the user has clicked on this button and not clicked on the remaining three. If the user has previously clicked on one of the other three, this uh, advanced action will also change the state of answer two, three, and four back to normal. And it also assigns, uh, I've got four variables that keep track of which button has been selected. So it assigns answer one, variable underscore answer one, with a value of one. And again, in, in case someone has selected something previously, it's going to reset variable answer two, three, and four back to their initial value of zero. It also is going to change the state of that feedback square I mentioned before, which is located right here. You can't really see it, but there's a um, essentially a transparent object that has additional states to represent feedback for all four of these possible answers. Actually, I've replaced the fourth one, so really it's just the three uh, not quite fully correct answers. So I'm going to close this and just to rest assured that there's a similar action for the uh, for all of these buttons, uh, obviously with the different uh, uh, buttons being selected as uh, selected or normal, depending on which button that it is you're working with. Now the next advanced action is contained within the submit button. So let me take you through that real quick. What I've done here is I've created a multiple decision advanced action. So in this case, I want to be able to display different feedback depending on which answer was selected. So the first one is going to be an incomplete. In other words, the user has not selected any of the answers. So it's 0, 0, 0, 0, and they've simply tried to hit submit to see what happens. It's going to change the state of that feedback square to incomplete. And then, of course, it gives you the appropriate message. If they choose answer one, it will change the state of the feedback square to answer one, answer two, and so on. And the one difference, the one thing I added was I disabled with answer four, which is the correct answer. I've disabled all of those buttons. I've changed the state of the feedback square instead of to what I previously had before, which was the correct feedback. I change it back to normal so it becomes transparent again. And then I show the correct caption group that I've created. But to satisfy Bobby's need to have it slide in from the bottom, I'm applying the effect to that caption group, ease in top, and of course, there's some parameters that are specific to that. I, I have the effect duration set for one second. I have the ease effect set for 100%. So it gives it a nice slow, and it comes to a slow stop. And then the initial alpha, which is how transparent something is, is set to zero. So it will start off with uh, completely transparent and then fade in at the same time that it's sliding in. So this should work quite nicely and essentially achieve what Bobby's looking for. So if I close this now, and let's just do a preview and see how that works. So let's preview this project. Uh, we'll do it in an HTML5 browser so we can see what that looks like. 
So here we go. Here's our, our question. And this is an all of the above question, essentially, which normally I'm not a fan of um, because generally people tend to use them um, almost 100% of the time as the only correct answer is all of the above. I'm okay with all of the above as long as you use uh, all of the above as a distractor, at least as often as it is the correct answer. So in this case here, what, what could the team do to make this more inclusive and respectful towards Sunita? So I could select that, hit submit. So there it is changing my transparent box to some caption. And you know, in this case, this is not a wrong answer, uh, but what we're saying here is that, you know, is there a better choice that you could make? So try again. And this is perfect for a knowledge check because there is no really right or wrong answers here. There's just that all of the above is probably the best choice. So again, when you click another answer, it returns that um, feedback square back to normal and we could try again. So again, once try again uh, and that that's fine. Let's try the correct answer and see that effect in action. So I'm going to hit submit and now this fades in. The, it blocks the background so I can no longer click any other buttons. Correct, click next to proceed and this brings me to the next page. Incidentally, if your user does make it back to this knowledge check, everything gets reset back to normal. There's no button selected and obviously the feedback gets returned to not visible in output. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.